Hi, my name is EJ Massa. Bagged bread is really convenient. It's pre-sliced, it lasts on the shelf for weeks, it's always soft. Basically, it's an abomination. A convenient abomination, but an abomination nonetheless, filled with sugars and preservatives, and you can't control that stuff, and I think that's important because people tell me it is. So let's go back to the basics and bake a bread that's tasty, easy to make, and ingredients list as simple as you can get. Water, flour, salt, yeast. That's it. You'll also need a four quart cast iron Dutch oven. <laughs> Farts. I have a large one which is relatively cheap, but you can also get one of those fancy French ones and that should work too. We need one of these Dutch ovens so that the bread dough provides its own steam to help bake the bread better. Okay, first we're gonna need one and a half cups of warm water. The temperature of the water should be around 95 degrees Fahrenheit, or 90 degrees if it's especially hot out. You don't want the water too hot because yeast dies at 114 degrees Fahrenheit and you don't wanna kill this cute little yeast guys, do you? Uh, a little bit cuter, please? There we go. So you also need a fourth teaspoon of active dry yeast. I'm just using store brand stuff here. Dissolve that into water, and we're gonna add three cups of flour and one and a half teaspoons of sea salt. I add the flour one cup at a time, and the salt a half teaspoon at a time, and mix together after each add. Now if I was a more serious baker, I'd be measuring exact amounts for the flour and the salt and the yeast with a, with a scale instead of haphazardly scooping them up with measuring cups, but I don't like using scales because it reminds me that I'm fat. <laughs> a note about flour is that I usually use organic unbleached flour, but this time I'm trying out this special bread flour and we'll see if it works any better or worse than the regular stuff. Mix it up until blended, then we're gonna cover up that bowl with saran wrap. You gotta make sure you get all the wrinkles out. If you don't get all the wrinkles out, your whole, your whole family's gonna die. Get the wrinkles out. Get all the wrinkles out. Let it sit for at least eight hours, preferably around 12 hours. Make sure the room is around 70 degrees. It just barely gets there in my drafty apartment. So now we have some time, so I'm gonna play some Zelda Breath of the Wild. 12 hours means nothing to me. I feel nothing. 12 hours up and the bread rose quite a bit. Rose up just like my d uh, the morning sun, because I'm baking in the morning. Baking with the morning wood. It. Lightly sprinkle a surface with some flour and place the dough on it. Fold the dough over itself a few times, then loosely cover with plastic wrap, and let it sit for 15 minutes. Afterwards, gently shape the dough into a ball. I'm not sure the best way to actually do the shaping. I, I just sprinkle a surface with, with flour and I just, I, just, I just push it with my hands until it's roughly in the shape of a ball. An optional accessory is a proofing basket, which helps the dough maintain its shape when proofing. And that's easily purchased from Amazon. Make sure to dust the basket with some flour. If you don't have one of these baskets, you can always just proof the dough on a surface covered in flour. In either case, cover the dough with a towel and let it rise for one or two hours. Until the dough roughly doubles in size, and when you poke it, hoo -hoo, it takes the dough a while to spring back. While that's going on, preheat the oven to 475 degrees. 20 minutes before the dough is ready, put the Dutch oven into the oven. This is so it gets nice and hot for the bread. When the dough is ready, take out the Dutch oven. Careful not to burn your precious little hands. Slide the dough into the pot and close the lid. We're gonna keep that in the oven for about 30 minutes. Then we'll remove the lid to darken the crust up a bit. Put it in for another 15 minutes. The bread flour didn't really perform amazingly different than regular flour, so just get regular flour, it's more versatile. Dump out the bread onto the cooling rack and then get out your camera and take some artsy pictures of your artisan bread. Make sure to use a shallow depth of feel to, to draw the eye to the texture of the bread. That's right, you're an artisan now, and all it took was is to bake, let's bake some bread. You did it, you're special now. Right now, we're gonna have some serving suggestions. Pour some extra virgin olive oil onto a plate. Pinch some kosher salt over it and dip. I bet you won't be able to stop. Spread some cream cheese on it and a little orange fig jam. It will be a delight to your guests. Make a fucking sandwich. Just make a, make a sandwich. It's a sandwich. If you want to learn more artisan bread baking techniques and not just the lazy and quick way to do it, I heartily recommend the book Flour, Water, Salt, Yeast by Ken Forkish. Oh, couldn't get Ken Fork, I see. Had to get Ken Forkish. Oh, that's a bad joke. Now that's all from EJ Cooks. Now go make that bread and impress all your friends with your bread making skills. Bye.